Sorry about that. Oh, jeez. Uh, as you can see, we uh, bottomed out in the freeway there, and uh, we sent some sparks up. I don't see where we, oh, I see, up near the headers there. We took, the yeah. took a little chunk out of the headers. Sorry about that. Whoa! Sorry about that. I think we're okay. Good. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today's featured car, 1969 Oldsmobile 442, one of the legendary muscle cars. Uh, sadly, it does not belong to me. It belongs to a good friend of mine, a uh, member of the Tank Show Band, Paul Jackson Jr. Paul, come on in here. Hey. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Jay. Now, I know he doesn't look like much, but this guy is one of the most famous musicians in the world. Played on the Michael Jackson Thriller album, if that's... That would be enough credit for some people to last a lifetime. Also at Barbara Streisand, Whitney Houston, B.B. King, uh, yeah. Joe Perry, yeah. uh, uh, Elton John, mm -hmm. uh, Pharrell. Yes. Pharrell with, as well. Yeah. Uh, and Ella Fitzgerald, you told me too. Uh, yeah, I got a chance to record with Ella Fitzgerald when I was 19 years old. Wow. So that was pretty amazing. That is almost 50 years ago. That is yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot older than he looked. But, but not only is he one of the most gifted uh, guitar players, in fact, uh, a gentleman named uh, Spanky, who's a very talented uh, guitar maker, made a guitar that was sort of a, an homage to one of my cars, my Fiat Botafogo. And, uh, and you came in and played, and it yeah. played pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, it was a good guitar. Yeah, yeah take a look. Take a look. Here he is. Well, that was the last time Paul was on. This time he's here with his uh, 1969 Oldsmobile 442. Not only a, a gifted musician, but a car guy as well, which is kind of what I like. Because guitars and cars really do seem to go together. You know, Jeff Beck has been here. Right. And, yeah. uh, Eric Clapton's a big car guy. And, of course, uh, you too. Um, so tell us about this car. Well, uh, when I was a kid, my dad had a 1967 uh, 442. And, and he had a few different cars in the backyard. And, you know, I kind of grew up around him. And, and he had one car, a 1937 LaSalle, that he never restored. And about 20 years ago, I started restoring it with my buddy Larry Dunbar. And uh, that really got me back in the car, seeing, you know, the craftsmanship and the metal work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I decided then I, I, I really liked older cars better. I remember this today. And your dad didn't know you were restoring it, right? No, he didn't It was know. a surprise. Right. So he must have been thrilled. He was blown away because he had never seen the car in good shape. Yeah. And so, you know, it had the original mohair interior. So what, did you steal it? Did you sneak it? What happened? Well, he kind of gave it to me because he was clearing oh, out his backyard. Yeah. And, and I said, well, Dad, don't sell that one. Give me that one. I'll do something with it. Yeah. And it sat for a while. I said, you know, I want my dad to be able to enjoy this. So right. we spent four years working on it and, uh, yeah, gave it back to him. And like I said, he had never seen it. It had the mohair. It had the big white walls, original flathead yeah, V8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so he, that, and that really show me, you know, like the quality of older cars. And, the, and I started falling out of love with newer cars and right. more in love with older cars. And, and, and this is not a show car, but any sense. It's a car you drive all the time. Yeah. Just judging by all the bugs on the front, <laughs> you didn't even clean up before you, before you brought it those over Those aren't here. bugs. Those are little dings in, in, the, in the chrome and the well, bumper. That's a, see, that's what I like. Cars that get used. That's the thing. And the thing I, this is kind of what I like. Just a slight resto mod. It looks stock. And I mean, oh, 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 trick wheels. And then I see those, uh, are those carbon fiber discs or steel discs? No, they're steel discs. Steel discs, yeah. okay, but obviously not stock. What brand is that? Those are Bear. Oh, Bear, okay, yeah. very good. Uh, the big brakes, the custom wheels. What else have you done to this? Well, quite a few things. Um, you know, like I said, got together with, with my buddy, once again, Larry Dunbar and Bob Lyman, who, uh, who actually, those guys built the car. But we decided that I wanted to have something that was a lot of fun to drive, but very predictable on the street. So, right. uh, you know, did the engine, and once you do the engine, everything behind it has to follow. So the transmission, the suspension, the brakes, the wheels and tires, and, and basically. What, what engine? Is stock engine modified or a crate engine? Would you it's a crate motor. Actually, we ended up going with uh, Scott Shafroff, uh, big block. Okay. Uh, Vinnie Badano and, and Scott Schaffer have built it. It's a 598. Wow. Uh, large big block, but very predictable. Nine and a half to one compression ratio. Yeah. Hydraulic roller cam, so it runs really nicely on pump gas. It just happens to have a lot of power and torque. So let's open the hood and take okay. a look. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Very nice. Nicely done, like the headers, not overly tricked out. This is what I like. I like cars that you can actually drive on the street. 
you know, you got a lot of guys that have come with stuff that's all chrome underneath and right. whatnot, and they can't actually use it. Whereas yeah. you see this, well, look at that, never even been washed. Amazing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty frustrating experience. I remember you'd been working on this a while, right. and it was done once and wasn't quite perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. we had a, an engine issue with someone who will go nameless, yeah. and so, you know, kind of got through that, and, and you know, I, I, I took your advice and took Larry's advice, and, and we put a, you know, put a big block Chevy in it, yeah. and, you know, very predictable, very, you know, very easy to maintain and you easy know, to get. Ford Chrysler, Chevy, they all make these great crate motors now. What kind of horsepower is it making? This actually makes, uh, at the flywheel, or actually at the flex plate since it's automatic, uh, 750 wow. horsepower and okay. 750 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it runs on pump gas. Pump gas, yeah. Well, wow, very nice. Very nice. And of course, you mentioned the brakes. Any suspension modifications? Yeah, it's all Hotchkiss uh, suspension, you know, upper and lower control arms in the right. front, trailing arms in the rear with sway bars, uh, QA1 shocks, Moog springs. We're big fans of Hotchkiss here. He did yeah. my uh, Ford 7 liter. Yeah. And, you know, they really know what they're doing. It, it really sort of behooves you to go with people who are experts in the field. And yeah. he, they, they're really, really good. Yeah. Uh, okay, nicely done. Let's shut the hood again. Thank you. Oops. And you use this as your car, huh? Yeah, I drive it. I have uh, the 66 El Camino that I drive more than this one because, right. uh, you know, Bob was teasing me. He said, this car can pass everything on the street except a gas station. Right, exactly. So, uh, now, what yeah. do you get for mileage? It's about nine, eight? It's uh, not quite that good. It's about, really? It's about, yeah, it's about five, between five and six miles to a gallon. Between five and six. So that would be maybe five and a half? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's quite a range. So, it's, you know, it's like... Really, five and six. Yeah, that's it's not really what you call a, a, a long distance yeah, car. Yeah, look, you can't even drive to the car wash. <laughs> oh! That's how expensive it is. Yeah. I'm going to say. See, I, see, most people, when they bring the car here, man, the night before this, shining it up, doing the System 51, doing the Meguiar's thing. Well, th this is what happened is, actually, to be quite honest, <laughs> is because it had sat so long without an engine, it had some paint issues. Yeah. And so I basically just pulled it out of paint okay. to, uh, to, to bring it here. And right. so it, I didn't want to, you know, mess with anything. So I understand. Yeah. How yeah. long have you had the car? Had the car about three and a half years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Been working on it, work in progress. So uh, original interior, except we redid, the, obviously redid the upholstery, mm -hmm. uh, new carpet, and uh, tilt column from I did it. Um, and but, it was originally an electric window car as yes, well. Yes. Uh huh. Because yeah. a lot of 442s weren't. Yeah. Well, I, I take that back. You know, the 442s were more of a luxury muscle car. A lot yeah. of them had electric windows and air conditioning and whatnot. The GTO and the Chevelles are sort of the base. The mm -hmm. Oldsmobile was kind of a yeah, a little bit more hoity banker's heart ride right. kind of thing you know. they used to call it. I like the custom wheel. Tell me about those gauges. Those are very nice. Yeah, Autometer has a program where you can basically take anything from their catalog and customize it. So I went online and I matched the five inch gauges, which were the original hole size with the color of the paint. And, uh, and order them from, from uh, Autometer, and they came, sent them to my door. Wow. Yeah. And see, this whole thing was built with Thriller money, right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> what did Thriller sell? 80 million 80 copies? 80 million copies. 80 million copies. Yep. Even if you got only a penny an album, <laughs> that would be enough to pay for this Unfortunately, car. I just got paid for showing up that day. Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty oh. much how it works. <laughs> uh, all right. But still, that makes you famous. You're the, you're the guy on the Thriller album. Yeah, so, so that, that's... Uh, yeah. That, and that's that, a blessing. That's a piece of history. Yeah, Paul Jackson Jr. Check out his music. All right, tell me about these wheels. What are those okay, wheels? Okay, these are Butnicks. Um, Pardon me? Uh, Butnick. Oh, Butnicks. Butnicks. Okay, Butnicks. thank you. Yes. And um, let's see, uh, 18 by 8 in the front, 18 by 11 in the rear. Um, we had uh, the car tubbed, mini tubbed, yeah. so we could uh, get the wider wheels and tires in the rear so we could put the horsepower to the ground. And it's uh, Chris Alton, uh, Chassis Works. Fab 9, 9-inch nine four-rear end with 411 gears in the rear. Oh, we got 411s four in Four elevens, too. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And a three-speed automatic? It's three-speed, but we're running a gear vendor, so, you know, I can oh, drive on the freeway. Oh, aren't those terrific? Oh, man, it's great. For those of you who don't know, gear vendor makes an overdrive unit. And what that means, essentially, if you don't know what overdrive means, it, it gives you, essentially, like a fifth gear. You get, you're going down the highway, you're turning... 3,800 or four grand at 70, you flip the switch, new, it drops to 2,800 or whatever yeah. it might be. And uh, it's really worth it because it saves you a fortune in, in, in fuel and uh, it, it, you can keep the 411 gears. Right, it's, yeah. It's as if you suddenly switch to 323s or something. Yeah. Really terrific. Let's see, five and a half miles per gallon. 
Let's spend a couple hundred bucks and take this thing for a ride. Let's start it up, see if it sounds like a muscle car. Okay, let's take it for a ride. So am I the first person to drive this since you, uh... Yep. Oh, there we go. Yep. All kinds of torque. You know, I love that Hotchkiss suspension. It just feels firm enough so you know where the car is. Right. You know? Because when these things come out, it was like this. You're all over the road. Yeah. You know, when you drive, when you drive an original muscle car, oh my God, <laughs> my 66 Hemi Coronet, that thing is so scary. It's got drum brakes and one master cylinder. And I remember I was going up Coldwater Canyon once, a yeah. windy road, and it was slightly wet, and I just gave it a little gas, and yeah, I did a 180, and I was facing the guy that was behind me. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and you realize, these things are dangerous. Right. I know it has air conditioning, but these kind of cars, you want to have the window open, kind of arm out like this. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, <laughs> we used to take my dad's car, which had no air conditioning, and we'd drive around with the windows rolled up and our sleeves down on hot days, so girls would think we had air conditioning. <laughs> and then we'd go, hey, girls, you want to ride? Oh, yeah. And then they go, hey, there's no air in this car! <laughs> was your dad an Oldsmobile guy? He was. Yeah. You know, funny, growing up, um, the first... Uh, Olds we had was a 65 Vista Cruiser right. station wagon. Oh yeah, with the, the Vista Cruiser had the um, the ports up right. the window. Yeah, those right. are cool. So then, you know, two years later, he got his, his 442, the 67, and then in 72, my mom got another Vista Cruiser. Right. Oh, okay. You know, so we were kind of an Oldsmobile family. Right. Okay, while we're sitting here at the light, that's about three bucks in gas. You just throw change in it all the time. What's the steering on it? Is it the stock steering? Uh, yeah, we put in a new box, a new steering box. I think, okay. what is it, the 605? Feels uh, nice. Steering. Yeah. It was funny. I had an idea for a skit when we were on the show. And it was, Jay, I challenged you to a race. So I was going to challenge you this against the Galaxy. And, of course, you'd beat me. You know, then I was going to, you know, one of your bikes against one of my, my, my Harley. And then you'd beat me. And then at the end of the skit, it's like, well, I know one way you can't beat me. And I was going to ride down the, the strip on a, on a unicycle. Can you ride a unicycle? I can ride a unicycle. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, I saw it on the wall. I said, ah, that might be cool. So I, you know, saved my money and bought it and over summer. Well, just the fact you looked at a unicycle and thought that might be cool. I'm surprised you weren't playing the accordion at this time. <laughs> right, and rolled a clown college. <laughs> yeah, play the accordion and ride a unicycle. Wow. Well, let's get back to the car. Ride's very nice. I like a kind of firm ride, but not uncomfortable. Yeah. I always like 442, so there's always a lot of debate about exactly what it stood for. Mm -hmm. Four on the floor, four barrel carburetor. And two exhaust. Dual exhaust, yeah. yeah. But then there are all sorts of other ones. Guys that come up with stupid sexual ones, whatever it might be. Yeah. But I think that's what it was. Yeah. Let's say the camera car's right next to you and you have to get away from it. Yeah. Just do this. <laughs> hey, they caught us. Get away from me. Look, we're in high school. This is a great street. I've never been on this street. Oh, yeah. When we get back to the shop, I'm going to put it up on the lift, and we'll show you this Hotchkiss suspension, because yeah. it really handles nicely. These things used to be all over the road when they were new. Paul gets a residual check from Thriller. He can afford to fill this thing up. <laughs> wow, look, Paul. Guys washing cars. Maybe you should swing by here, see if they'll clean this one. Hey, leave me alone. Hey, guys, how you doing? Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, we're, we're gonna wash it later. Thank, yeah, we're gonna clean it up. We promise. No, see, I give them a lot of grief, but the car should be used. Now, what does the plate say? Old and May. What Old and May. What does that mean? Well, May is my grandmother's uh, middle name. Okay. And Olda, you know, from Oldsmobile, Olds. Olds. Okay. You know, and you kind of feel like you know your car should be like your sweetie. You know, your 
your baby. So, you know, your car should be kind of like a girl. So I named it Olda right, right. May. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I just I said, let's keep it blue. I mean, even though we Yeah, and the it, wheels just... give a little hint that there's something special going on. Yeah. I mean, this car is almost 50 years old. Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. You know, I love these cars come from an era when your dad only drove American cars. Right. My dad would always say, what do you want one of those foreign jobs for? You can't get parts for them. <laughs> in fact, I used to work in a place called Foreign Motors. Yeah. Because the cars were all foreign. Now, yeah. there's no foreign cars anymore. Right. Well, my thing was, you know, I like, you know, real dashboards and real interiors and fabric and wood yeah, yeah, and metal yeah. as opposed to plastic. So, you know, yeah. I just, you know, that's kind of my thing. And, you know, you get that in, in, in old, uh, old American cars. fluid coming out is nothing. <laughs> might try a higher spring rate in the rear. To, yeah, uh, or we could skip a couple of lunches, whatever you think. Yeah, yeah that, that might work too. Yeah, whatever you yeah. think we need to do. <laughs> now, nah, buy some springs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The 442 was always a kind of understated supercar. Never quite got the respect of the GTOs and the Hemi cars, but uh, make no mistake, this is a Powerful, powerful vehicle. Yeah. Plenty of horsepower, nice handling, classic kind of 60s interior. Got your padded dash and your big comfortable seats. I remember being a kid and, uh, you know, going, taking off with my dad in his 442 and, you know, he'd leave it in first gear and hit the gas and you know, taking up to about 3,500 RPMs and then let it slow down and hear the pops, the pipes pop. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that was just, you know, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world that, you know, obviously I was seven or eight years old, but it was just always really cool to me. You know. So what was about a two year restoration, two and a half? Yeah, about a two and a half year. Yeah. You know, the thing that really held it up was, you know, kind of the engine issues, but, yeah. you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, as, as, as anything else, you know, you work on it a little bit, you know, say, okay, well, throw a little more money at it, you know, and work on a little bit, you know, drive it a little bit. It's like, okay, let me fix this, you know, so yeah, about two and a half years. It's always important to put your car up in the air. This way the wife can see where the money for the new dinette set went, right? You know, it's a little too of, close to home right yeah, now. Jay. Exactly. Why have a new dining room set when you can have a Hotchkiss suspension? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, as you can see, we uh, bottomed out in the freeway there, and uh, we sent some sparks up. I don't see where we... Oh, I see, up near the headers. Yeah, a little dent in the header, yeah. Took a little chunk out of the headers. Sorry about that. Yeah, it happens. But here's, uh, here's that whole Hotchkiss setup, as you can see. Nicely done. You know, we are looking for a car that, you know, had uh, little of any rust, because, you know, that, that was the thing, you know. I didn't right. Start doing a lot of body panels with the car. No, nice and straight. All the frame rails yeah. are good. Those are massive headers on this thing. Yeah. It was, you know, that was a little bit of a challenge, too, because I actually wanted to go with either short tube or mid-length. Yeah. And, uh, and the guys at Shafroff said, no, if, if you can do long tube, do long tube. But then we had a few fitment issues, and so that was a bit of a challenge. And you can see the big, wide tires, obviously wider than anything they had back in the day. <laughs> no, it hooks up very well. It's a real nice car. Paul, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Very nice. So now buy some of Paul's albums, because he's... His wife had to give up the dining room set to get this thing fixed. And so. the couch, and, and the, the refrigerator, couch, and, the and, and believe me, I hear about it every day. That's so, right. Yeah. But the nice thing is you can yeah. just get in your car, 
and drive away. Yeah. <laughs> but well, the, thank you, my thank friend. Thank you. Thank you very all right. much. This is Mr. Thriller right here. Yeah. On the th hey, check any old albums you have. You're going to see his name on the liner notes. So. Can I do a shameless plug? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the, the, the current CD is called Lay It Back. Lay It Back. Lay It Back. You can get it at Amazon or iTunes or CD Baby or, or any of that kind of stuff. So check it out. Shameless plug. There you go. Oh, there's a wife calling now. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs>